Hi everyone, it's Susan again. This time we're looking at Saturn in Pisces. It starts at the beginning of March in 2023. We'll look at the dates in just a moment. And this is going to be particularly interesting for those of you who have Saturn in Pisces, but also, especially if you have Saturn in Virgo or Sagittarius or Gemini, because those are going to have hard aspects to this Saturn transit, which means that there's going to be a big life adjustment for all of you, Pisces and Virgo and Sagittarius and Gemini. So do listen up. All of the mutable signs are really going to be impacted. And I want to give you a few pointers from a person with Saturn in Pisces, Natalie, some of the things that I have understood about this, so I may be biased, I'm just warning you now, but uh, also I think I might have some insider information, so that can also be a bit helpful, hopefully, for some of you. The other thing I want to point out is that Saturn will be different and responds differently to a person whether you have that in a day chart or a night chart. Saturn in a day chart does respond quite favorably and tends to give you more constructive results. Of course, that's not to say that Saturn doesn't require effort because, you know, that's the, the, the truth is that it does. Um, but just to say that it's worth noticing the difference. Um, and either way, regardless of whether Saturn is in a day chart or a night chart, it is there to teach us some really important life lessons. Um, if you think of Saturn as kind of the teacher of, you know, showing us the lessons of life through the school of hard knocks, compared to, say, Jupiter, which rules Pisces, which is trying to teach us through wisdom, um, through wise people, and through scripture as well. Um, and so those are two ways of learning about life that blend when Saturn is in Pisces. And so somebody with Saturn in Pisces actually has quite a resilient way of looking at the world. And this, again, depends on the rest of your chart. But nonetheless, there's quite a lot of resilience in that it's built in because the optimism of Jupiter is helping to lift up. It adds a bit of buoyancy to the pessimism and negativity of Saturn. Um, so there's a lot of endurance in this energy, and I want you to think of that even in the transit as well. So when transiting Saturn is moving through wherever Pisces is in your chart, and we'll have a look at that shortly, sign by sign, this is where you can see I want to build resilience. So this is especially the message of Saturn in Pisces, understanding the bigger picture of life and how our role in our life is um, either favoring our participation in that bigger picture, bringing us resilience and more understanding, deepening our spiritual connection to life. And that can be even if you're an atheist, you don't have to, uh, you know, take on any kind of religion because Jupiter is about wisdom in all kinds of forms. It has to be said that people with Saturn in Pisces can go through real changes um, around religion and whatever they believe, especially because Saturn is very critical and Jupiter is all about belief and wisdom and understanding the, the truth of life, the, the essence of life. And Saturn is kind of like, you know, show me, uh, show me something about this. And so often in the early stages, up until the first Saturn return, people with Saturn in Pisces can be um, even atheist. I went through a phase as well, being extremely disgruntled with my early religion and went through a phase of atheism and almost what you could call uh, giving up on any sense of authority or hierarchy, only to be able to come back around to all of those things through a higher understanding of life as I went through the different phases of Saturn, um, as we do, as we ideally will do when we go and uh, grow through challenges um, in life. So this Virgo-Pisces axis is always the axis of healing and surrender. It's about service. And when Saturn is in Pisces, that can have us being a little bit too surrendering. You know, again, that's that sense of the Pisces desire to be of service through that uh, polarity point in Virgo, but also the sense of Pisces, meaning that we don't really have a sense of an inherent value and that's not to say that all Pisces lack self-esteem it's more to say that the ego is more diffused in the energy of Pisces and again that's not to say a Piscean person cannot have an ego again these have to be seen in the context of your chart a, a first house Pisces is going to be very different for example than a 12th house Pisces 
um, we would have to see an individual layout to see where how strong the ego can be. And that, of course, also is an aspect of you know going through life and growing through life, as it were. But nonetheless, that sense of self is much more um, effaced, let's say, in Pisces. And that can be a, sort of a charming, self-effacing way of approaching life. But it can also be really self-denying as well. And so one can sort of give oneself up in uh, in many ways, give oneself one's own comfort, one's own um, development, personal development up for other people. So sacrifice uh, of course, is a double-edged sword. And so this can be very good or very bad in the life of a person with a lot of Pisces, and in particular with Saturn in Pisces. But Saturn is always challenging the ego and thinking of it in terms of what the ego might desire. This is where Saturn will cause friction, will cause things to break down. It doesn't challenge what is real. And this is what Pisces tends to focus on. This is what Jupiter brings to our attention is what is real, that consciousness that is constant, this self-awareness. The energy of Pisces corresponds to Christ consciousness or Krishna consciousness or what you could call the Buddha nature, you know, the, the, the inner knowing that is the self with the capital S that we're aware of, the, that is pure awareness all through life. And, and when Saturn is there, it gives form to that. And so whatever seems to be kind of tangential to that form or whatever seems to be kind of temporary and not so important, uh, uh, Saturn in Pisces, it's just letting it go. It's not interested. And so for people who are more materially focused or materially driven, and that's not a judgment, some people are born in this particular form to be more engaged in the material stuff of life. People with Saturn in Pisces are not really that driven by the material stuff of life. It's there, you know, could be very present in their lives, but they're not really all about that stuff. And so when, when, cha when challenged by this uh, energy of Saturn, it's really breaking down all of those sort of life goals that are about personal achievement, personal success, and so on. And pot potentially making all of that fall away until you get to the real point of the Piscean energy, which is that service. It is being of service, not being in servitude. This is something I always tell my clients with this, a, a strong Virgo and Pisces axis, beware of not being in servitude, be in service, which is coming from a sense of capacity. It's coming from a sense of, I'm here for this. Uh, I, I, it, it makes me uh, feel it makes me feel connected to the whole that I can be in service. And when Saturn is there, we also need to be aware, especially in the early stages of development, um, psychological or egotistical or spiritual development through Pisces, through life, <laughs> um, that we might be, again, overgiving and over sublimating our own needs, uh, that we are not sufficiently taking care of our own needs and then mostly taking care of the needs of others and as we go through the different houses you'll see how this pans out because it can have an effect on your energy levels and on your even your personal success or even your health um so so we'll have a look at for each individual how that's uh, working out but uh, keep these things in mind especially for those of you with saturn and pisces natally uh, because this is definitely something that will be emphasized this time around and that, of course, means that you're coming around to your Saturn return. If you have Saturn in Pisces, or if it's in Virgo, it's your Saturn opposition. And again, if it's in Sagittarius or Gemini, it's your Saturn square. So challenging your sense of life purpose and what your what your aims are overall, maybe even who you are overall. And so keep this kind of in the back of your mind as we go through this. Um, so it's very, very much about this understanding of, you know, where where you fit into your own life. Are you are you showing up for yourself in your own life um, and not overdoing it? Uh, it's always wonderful to be of help and of service. Um, but I am speaking from experience as I move into my second Saturn return that, uh, you know, overgiving and over caring for other people. Um, ends up uh, costing you one way or the other and um, in some cases in many many ways including financially or again through your health or your own particular life goals 
And of course, that's fine to do on a conscious level. There's no, there's no right and wrong in, in, that, uh, in that understanding of what you're here for. What I have learned through this Piscean energy that I'm here living through this lifetime around is this understanding that uh, people think that you're a little bit crazy or um, stupid or maladjusted because your goals are not necessarily material. And our society, especially in this, what I consider to be Kali Yuga um, energy, I know not everybody agrees with the timing on that, but I can't see it any other way except that we're in this Kali Yuga. Um, and I'll do another video on that because I think it's helpful to understand what that means for those of you who are not super clear on that. But just to understand that the role of Pisces in this world, which is driven by money and outward success and driven by um, acknowledging one's hierarchical place in society that really doesn't have its place in Pisces. Pisces energy is very much about being subsumed in the one. It's like pranava, it's the, the om, you know, om is both a singular sound and it's also the representation of all other speech and, and sound vibrations in the universe. It's sort of the fundamental flame, the start of everything um, from that sound vibration. And so when a Pisces looks at life, this, I think, from the Piscean perspective, is why we are so able to overcome adversity and say, you know, kind of shrug our so shoulders and go, oh, well, you know, so we lost that, we lost that relationship, we lost that money or whatever. And this, of course, comes with time and it depends on your chart. Of course, it's not necessarily going to be accessible to everyone just because you have Pisces here and there in your chart in a particular uh, form. And by the way, everyone has Pisces in their chart. It's not like Piscean people are more spiritual than other people. You know, an Aries or a Leo and any other any other sign is just as spiritual. The potential is there. Pisces is in the chart somewhere in your life. And there is where you are um, somehow drawing on that spiritual energy. It's not that only Piscean people are spiritual. I'm just giving you the perspective of someone who's got these um, these placements quite strongly and and so we just to come back to my my point after this is also very Piscean by the way going all over in every direction fish swimming in two di directions in the same sentence that that sense of uh, this material world is temporary it is illusory not in the sense that it's uh, fake but in the sense that it is all, always changing and that the idea that it should stay fixed and that we can possess anything or that we can possess a person or that can, we can accumulate things um, ultimately when you see life from that bigger picture of the continuity of the self capital s self the christ consciousness the krishna consciousness the buddha nature etc that all is to understand that this is just stuff it's just for fun this time around it's just this what the hindus call the lila it's the play of the universe and it's not real it's not what is real with a capital r and so pisces is kind of like okay that's all right so that's gone now um i personally see this as a strength and i see that the people in my life who have a lot of Pisces, and I do have a lot of those, um, and especially those who have Saturn in Pisces in different generations, they see life in this way where your the resilience comes from the capacity to detach. Saturn is all about detachment. Pisces, of course, is anyway about letting go into that expansive understanding of what life is about. And so, of course, it doesn't mean that we're we're not shedding tears and that we're somehow levitating at the, you know, at the first um, sign of discomfort. But really, what it is is that we're understanding through the sadness, through the loss, through the pain of betrayal or whatever other significant event might be there, that okay, it will be fine in the end. You know, Jupiter. Um, Jew people with Jupiter in the 12th, uh, which I also happen to have, so that maybe gives me an edge, <laughs> um, or Jupiter in Pisces, or this Jupiter-Saturn combination with Saturn in Pisces, they do have that resilience, which says that, you know, this is this is only one part of a story. It's a chapter of a story, and Jupiter is giving you that lift. It's giving you that sense of saying, okay, I'll land on my feet. I can, I whatever is going on, I will land on my feet. And the very important thing, again, because the 
element of teaching runs through Saturn in Pisces is that that lesson is not only learned by the individual, but it becomes a lesson that one can either model or teach explicitly in life. And so Saturn in Pisces also creates good role models and people who are able to show us somebody is something uh, you know that of importance in life somebody who could be particularly you know extremely humble in life that's not actually even you know I'm not talking about people who stand up in front of a classroom or in front of any situation to actually teach as teachers but the modeling of a way of living um, can be very powerful with this combination of Jupiter and Saturn together that will express itself slightly differently for Sagittarius uh, when um, when Saturn is in Sagittarius, but it's a similar combination. So I find that for this path of surrender here with Pisces uh, being the, the kind of uh, letting go, the ultimate letting go, that of course on a mundane level is difficult, but Saturn helps here because Pisces, again, because of that kind of sense of it'll all be fine, there is this kind of disorganization and a little bit of not, not really caring, not really being terribly well organized or being very quickly drawn into something else. That's, again, that energy of Jupiter, which is expanding in every direction and curious about all kinds of things and not necessarily the things that need to be done today by six o'clock, let's say. Um, and so with Saturn there, it actually helps because Saturn brings structure. It brings structure to this form. And another way that that can help in this regard is that Saturn brings this kind of structure to the imagination and creativity of Pisces. That creativity can be in an artistic sense, but it's creativity in the in the sense of how you are creating your life as you go forward. So it's important to understand that the notion of being able to visualize something and then see that materialize is not just through some wave of a wand um, or some magical apparition or or some special karma that you are being blessed with uh, this punya that you get this time around it is from understanding that that vision is possible and you know what to do to achieve it so you'll still have to do the work you still have to study you still have to do the practice of sketching or the, whatever the art might be or uh, you're an accountant even uh, yes that can happen <laughs> Pisceans can be accountants and you're putting the effort into understanding the details Saturn in Pisces will help with that and um, and so that's definitely something where mastery is um, is possible you know wherever Saturn is anywhere in your chart is where you have the potential for mastery um, and then of course with Saturn in Pisces and depending on the house that that's in that can bring an element of mastery over understanding life itself there's a bigger picture mastery that may not show up in the world you know that may not show up to other people but again it's that sense of I've understood something about my role in this world and the 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 world in the universe and my my little blink of an eye experience of life in this in this bigger picture um and that allows you to be who you are through whatever other context you're living and um, and i find that this is um, again something that um, pisces isn't bothered about being noticed in that regard there's no need for fame name and fame uh, especially with saturn in pisces just not interesting it doesn't matter with Saturn in Pisces, I also want to say that there can be some, as I mentioned in the beginning, some challenges around the belief structure that can have some real concrete stress around um, whatever religious structure you might have, or even educational training and formation and structure you may have gone through. And uh, those challenges have been actually showing you where you can be your own damn guru as it were you know it's that sense of okay I understand this challenge was there I was perhaps and this is very Piscean um, or maybe Saturn in Pisces, Pisces specifically it's perhaps putting too much faith in others and not enough in myself putting too much faith in a belief or in an idea and not enough faith in my participation in that so this is really a, a process. Anytime Saturn is transiting somewhere in the chart, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a longer, slower change. And so, you know, wherever your challenges or losses come up, 
it's just showing you where you need to change. And especially with Saturn in Pisces, it may be feeling conflicted around, um, you know, sacrificing yourself uh, or conflicted around um, feeling guilty, feeling um, a sense of conscious or unconscious guilt, and maybe recognizing that and um, feeling guilty for either not showing up for someone, which can be a difficult uh, thing for Pisces Virgo people because of that feeling of kind of obligation or a desire to be of, of help, be of service. Uh, but that conflict is also showing you where you need perhaps to show up for yourself. And of course, it's all about balance. Often what happens is the first time Saturn comes around in the chart, the lessons are a little more challenging. And then the second time that Saturn comes around, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, I remember this. We can do this better this time. And you, you do master yourself and whatever the lessons are in that house. Um, and this is, of course, the life lesson of Saturn in general, is that it's about aging and wisdom that is gained through age. Saturn and Pisces, that combination of, of uh, the Jupiter um, rulership of Pisces and Saturn that is transiting or in Pisces, is going to give you this understanding of, you know, what, what the beauty of aging, the beauty of, um, of the the crone or the wise woman, or the wise man sort of um, archetype in life. And, you know, so this is again where that understanding of beyond 30, uh, where we really have got to know ourselves better and we're fitting better into our own lives, hopefully. Uh, and if we're still not living by our own principles, it will hurt even more as you go beyond that first Saturn return. It hurts even more than you really are forced back into questioning what it is that you want out of your life. So this is what I'd like to say about the overall concept of Saturn in Pisces. And certainly this is something that will affect people who are natally Saturn in Pisces types. I wanted to offer a discount for you if you're having your first or your second or perhaps even your third. But I guess maybe by the third time you don't care anymore. But the Saturn uh, in Pisces, people who are going through their Saturn return um, I'm offering 10% off on any of my astrology readings, and uh, you'll just need to use the code fearless-fish, so we'll put that in the message underneath the video, so click on the more underneath the video to find that linked there. If you're in doubt, the dates also will be linked there, and so we can have a look at how this Saturn return is asking you to show up in your life. So just to wrap up this general overview of Saturn in Pisces, it's really about understanding that any sense of a crisis of faith in your life, wherever that is showing up in your chart, is really only about understanding yourself and the need to reassess your own beliefs of what life is all about, what you're here for, and work through that doubt and that lack of faith. Because the lack of faith is fundamentally a lack of faith in yourself. It's not about the outer world. It's not about what's going on in somebody else's role uh, or in somebody else's idea of life. So that is perhaps the time where you want to cultivate new convictions, new a new sense of willpower. It's helpful to make a vow wherever you really want to make a change. By making a vow, it's a very profound uh, spiritual concept. You know, in the in Sanskrit, that's known as vrat. It's a commitment. It's something, it's very strong. Even the word sounds strong, vrat. <laughs> and that vow is, um, is there to um, help you to remember what it is that you're trying to do. Remember the bigger picture. Remember Jupiter is all about the bigger picture. Pisces is all about the bigger picture of life. Saturn is about the effort we're putting in to achieve that bigger picture. So what is your vow? For Pisces energy, we look at the polarity of Virgo. So focus on the details, focus on the visible aspects, focus on the house where Virgo is in your chart to see where some work may need to be done to support the work of Saturn in Pisces. This is really very much about allowing yourself to be at the same time the reflection of whatever is going on around you, but also remembering that Saturn provides a container for that wishy-washiness in the eyes of some or that that uh, diffuse kind of ever-present, omnipresent energy of Pisces. And so Saturn is just providing the context of where you want to commit. This is really about understanding that whatever has happened, whatever is appearing in your life, 
is simply the result of the karmas of your life. Now, again, I'll, I think I'll do a separate video on karma because it's so misunderstood in the Western world. And it's extremely important as a concept. We wouldn't be looking at an astrology chart without karma. Karma is the result of your past actions in this lifetime. It's not a judgment. It's not about um, blame. It's a consequence. It's what's showing up. But it's also past actions of previous or other lifetimes that you may have experienced. And it's also the actions of your ancestors and the, and the community that you live in and the world. Let's face it, we're all on the same planet. That's Piscean, right? We're all here in the same boat, uh, in the same universe, and we're experiencing this collective karma. And so Saturn here in Pisces is all of that. It's the collective karma. It's your family karma. It's your karma. Understanding that that has brought you to this point, that everything that you see in your life exactly right now where you are is a result of all of that karma just coming to this point of awareness. And so how you choose from now on, this is Saturn, how you choose, how do you where are you putting your attention? Where are you putting your effort? Where are you putting in the hard work? That's Saturn. It's the ability to do the hard work that is going to create the new karma, that the, the karma that you uh, are creating from this point on is at least as important as all of the karmas that you're living through. And so this is absolutely not the energy of rolling over and deciding that there's nothing that you can do about your karma uh, because it's all predetermined or somehow there's no point in trying. It's really to understand that it's just what brought you to this point. And from this point on, now there's quite a lot that you can do. Saturn in Pisces makes you emotionally, psychologically, and, um, and certainly spiritually resilient. So draw on that resilience wherever you find Saturn in Pisces in your chart. And we'll see as we go through the wheel um, how that might pan out for you. And also keep in mind where Jupiter is either natally or by transit. And also I'll alert you to where the houses are in your chart that are ruled by Saturn. And you'll have a sense also of how that's reflecting back on what it is that Saturn is asking you to do right now as it goes through Pisces. And so let's have a look at the dates for Saturn in Pisces. Now, keeping in mind that it's a transit that happens roughly every 30 years. So it's about 29 and a half years for Saturn to go through the entire zodiac. And so for those of you who are in born in the mid-30s, you'll have Saturn in Pisces. And those of you born in the mid-60s, like myself, you're having Saturn in Pisces. And then those of you born in the early to mid-90s, then you also have Saturn in Pisces. So, of course, those who are born now coming forward in this new cycle, which begins on the 7th of March, will also have Saturn in Pisces. This can be interesting if you're an, an expectant parent and you want to listen in to see how that might affect the development of your child. And so just as a reminder, for those of you who are born in these particular dates, you do have Saturn in Pisces, and I'm offering you 10% off on my astrology readings with the code FEARLESS-FISH, all in caps. I'll put it in the show notes below this video so you can see, and I'll put the link also to book a reading. And I'd love to help you see how Saturn in Pisces is affecting you and where that's asking you to show up in your life. So let's have a look now, sign by sign, as we go through Saturn in Pisces. Hey, Pisces, this is, of course, all about you this time around. And so we're starting with you as well. Saturn is going to be in your first house, and this is going to change a number of things in your life. So, of course, it affects you physically. It's often where we start to realize that there's a process of aging uh, but it depends, of course, where Saturn is in your chart natally, and this may come up in a relatively early stage of life, and then it's not showing uh, this question of age so much as it's showing about uh, willpower or your first your confidence, let's say, in how you engage in life. When Saturn goes into the first house, we have a sense of responsibilities in the real four pillars of life, the things that are really extremely demanding in most lives, which is oneself and one's well-being, the health of the body, for example, um, your own personal needs, but also, of course, the relationship, what sits across from you. 
and the home and family and as well your work. So those four areas of life are going to be challenged uh, in this period of almost three years. It's a time where you really grow. You're starting a whole new cycle. And this will be particularly true if you are an ascendant or sun. But of course, even moon is going to show where this cycle is beginning emotionally. When Saturn is crossing over the moon, it can be a time of depression. It can be a time where you feel really low. It can be a time where you feel isolated and lonely. And that, of course, will depend on other factors in the chart. But just keep that in mind because it's not designed for you to become depressed and despondent in life. Rather, it's designed for you to be more introspective. So if you do have a Pisces moon, then notice that as well. For the sun and the ascendant, it's about how you show up in your life and in particular um, around the career, around the work that you do. And so there's a lot here to be said for standing up for yourself. And are you able to assert yourself in a way that is really working for you? And Saturn going through the first house is going to show you that. It's going to show you how you need to restructure your life. Now, we want to follow Jupiter going through the houses as Saturn is in Pisces. And Jupiter will be going through Aries all the way into Cancer while Saturn is in Pisces over these next three years. And so keep tracking where's, where Jupiter is going in your chart. In this case, it's going to be in the second, third, fourth, and fifth houses of your chart. And, and so that's going to be showing you that most of this restructuring, most of the work that you're doing is going to be supported by all of those different aspects of your life, second, third, fourth house fifth house matters and and so keep following Jupiter as it's moving through the zodiac over the next three years to see where it is that the support is coming from where it is that the expansion is coming from that you are now going to restructure while Saturn is in the first house Saturn in the first house can also have you rethinking relationships having a sense of what you need in relationship that can also be on a professional level, but most often it's the intimate relationship. Most often it's the life partner. And so any questions around your role in relationship will come up and how it is that you feel you need to stand up for yourself again in that context, or maybe restructure aspects of your relationship as regards your, your own needs. Keeping in mind that as a Piscean, you tend to offer much more of yourself in relationship and you tend to perhaps sub sublimate somehow your own needs. Where Saturn is now is showing you, actually, you can do this really well. Now you can really stand up for yourself and restructure yourself in a way that might be challenging for relationships or for family or for work relationships, because people just don't recognize you in that kind of role. Learning how to say no, for example, it's very Saturnian and being able to say, well, actually, that doesn't work for me. And this is a phrase that you can practice as you go through this Saturn in the first house. That doesn't work for me or that doesn't work for me now. Notice that that's a very different flavor from just saying no. When you say no, people will often argue with you about what the no is all about. And in fact, when you say it doesn't work for me, it's difficult to argue that because it's coming from a place of what you believe or you understand about yourself and what you need right now. So uh, respect for yourself is a very important feature of Saturn going through the first house. And you're also setting yourself up for a 30-year cycle of how you're showing up in your own life. So there is going to be a lot of interiority. There is going to be much more of a sense of what is necessary for you to restructure in life, but also in your inner sense of self, your inner life. It's not a great time to start new projects. It's not a great time to leap into new things, new plans, new ideas, because with Saturn there, it's more that you've just kind of completed a cycle and you're starting to figure things out now for this new cycle. So use this time with Saturn in the first house to figure out who you are. <laughs> who am I right now in my life? How do I show up in my life? And it, with that in mind, that will take you through this cycle of nearly three decades to come where you're really starting to expand more into life as you go forward. And you'll find that the more work you do now on understanding yourself, the easier, the more challenging aspects of the transits as you go through in the next seven and 14 and 21 years, they're, they're going to be much more graceful because you know who you are. And as you're showing up in all of those different domains of life, you show up in a way that is um, full of integrity and full of respect for yourself. 
So we want to also keep in mind what Saturn rules in your chart, and that's the 12th house and the 11th house. And so whatever is happening here in your first house is always going to have a flavor of the 12th and the 11th house. And this very much means restructuring your sense of your spiritual life, your sense of connection to whatever is invisible, let's say this invisible force that runs life. Um, that can also have something to do with people who are far away from you, people who live abroad or foreigners. Um, and then, of course, in the 11th house, that's the groups and friends that you associate with. It's the people you hang out with. And so here, when Saturn is in the first house, we want to also keep in mind that it's recalling the transit that Saturn has made over the last five or six years. And all of those changes that you've made, you're now crystallizing here in the first house. And, and it's giving you a sense of maybe renewal. Maybe that's a renewal in terms of how you see yourself with regards to questions of loss or life and death issues or your spiritual connection to life or just simply what are your goals what are your dreams what are your hopes and how have they transformed and who is coming along for the ride who are you taking with you in this journey of your life and so while Saturn is in the first house you're doing an enormous amount of housekeeping it affects all the different aspects of your life and it's going to be the most valuable work that you do in the Saturn cycle in terms of setting yourself up for success later on and that success of course will be determined by what your goals are what Saturn has also um, reorganized in the in the phase of time when it was in the sign of Capricorn and so those goals may be something that you're embodying now with Saturn in Pisces it's now you're realizing that's the thing that's what's more important to me now and then you'll just continue to add that in to all of the next phases of life as you go forward and of course because you have either the ascendant sun or moon in Pisces this is going to be very impactful on your life so pay attention to signs of fatigue or needing to withdraw a little bit um, don't feel bad don't push yourself forward if it's going to be challenging for you to do so recognize that there are times in the cycle of life where we do need to retreat a little bit and there are times where we need to work harder and this cycle of Saturn going through Pisces in the next three years is going to show you that it's going to ebb and flow because of course it's not going to be affecting you exactly the same way over three years so look for the degree point of your ascendant the degree point of your moon and your sun and recognize that those times will probably be a little more impactful. There's going to be perhaps a, a need for you to work harder, or there will be a feeling of it all, it all becomes too hard. And so either you look for support or you look for a way to step back and relax a little bit more, sleep a little bit more, take care of your physical form, because of course it is also in the house of self. It's not the frightening transit that a lot of people make it out to be Saturn builds us it builds our self-esteem it builds our sense of mastery and capacity and so don't shy away from what Saturn is showing you needs to change because if you avoid the work that needs to be done here you will end up with problems later on that if there's too much of an emphasis on other people and their needs or your work and the needs of the office or your home life and the needs of the house and home then you really will find that you'll struggle yourself with your health or with your own sense of self um, that could be through a identity or it can be through the emotional and psychological and physical well-being so do take care of that it's a priority that allows you to support all of what you're doing in the rest of your life and best wishes to all Pisces through this phase Aquarius this is happening in your second house this is what supports you in life you can consider this also around um, issues of the family issues of money issues of your values and when Saturn goes through this house you can be challenged in those areas it can be loss of money loss of family loss of a sense of what is important for you um, and that can also work in your favor in the sense of you realize that there's less importance to be placed on certain things like money or your stuff you know it's the second house is your valuables it's the house of stuff and so when you understand that actually now is the time to shed some of those things you might find this is actually a really great time to let go to simplify in life to find that you want to downsize that you want to release certain things in your life and then Saturn in Pisces is going to really reward you for that 
if it's around money, then it can have something to do with needing to work harder for money. It doesn't mean money's not coming to you. So Saturn in the second house can also be a real signature for wealth. Remember that Jupiter rules the second house after all. And this is about working harder for money. It just means that it's not going to probably land in your lap. Um, there can be some um, issues around self-esteem if Saturn is in the second house as well. So take note and make sure that you're also aware that maybe you're putting yourself down or you're putting other people's needs again in front of your own. And that's not going to help you. You, you might even find that you let go of money uh, in, a, in a way that doesn't support you so that you're either donating too much or you're allowing people to to take advantage of you financially and that's of course going to affect you and your family so be careful with those kinds of things and if there's any doubt ask another person ask a, a neutral person to show you where in your where in your sense of self-esteem you're maybe undermining yourself Saturn is here to build that up it's not to tear it down but in the beginning it might feel like that it might feel like you're really losing faith in yourself but Saturn is just showing you where you don't have it. It's not something happening to you. It's happening through you and your understanding, okay, this is now me not taking care of myself, or it's me not doing the hard work necessary to build the wealth or to take care of the money, not paying attention to the details around money. And as a result, my money situation is not working. If you do pick up on that and you really understand the importance of organizing yourself around money or organizing yourself around whatever wealth accumulation you might have, whether that's investments or the belongings that you have, then you can put everything in order. And it's not about necessarily accumulating great wealth. It's just maintaining and taking care of the wealth that you have or whatever it is that you are relying on, whatever it is that's nourishing you. Saturn in the second house, much like with the first house, can also affect your physical body because um, those two houses are affecting your food intake and your physical frame. So you might find that with Saturn going through the second house, you have to change the way you eat or you decide to change the way you eat. Or this might have something to do with drinking or intake of alcohol or other substances um, that may not be working for you. And Saturn is going to show you that if it's a problem for you, Saturn will show it. And in this case, you also have the capacity through Saturn to restructure that. And so do take care of your diet uh, without depriving yourself. So this is not about deprivation and starvation. It's about understanding how you might need to restructure your diet or restructure the type of food that you take in or the substances that you might consume that aren't really helping you. So take note that as Saturn is going through your second house, then also you have Jupiter in the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth houses of your chart throughout those three years. And so track what Jupiter is doing, all of those different phases of Jupiter moving through the other aspects of your house. And you'll see that that's going to guide you through all of the changes that you need. So you're always going to want to know what is Jupiter doing throughout this transit of Saturn in Pisces, because it's ruling Saturn. It's kind of like a remote control, and it's giving Saturn the instructions of how to move forward in life, how it is that you need to reshape yourself or reshape your life as Jupiter is moving through those houses. Equally, keep in mind that Saturn rules you in your first house, as well as your 12th house of spirituality and, um, and loss, as well as the faraway places, distant lands and foreigners. And so that place of the 12th house has already been passed by with Saturn informing you and kind of reshaping you around all of those aspects of your life as it was in Capricorn. And then with Saturn in Aquarius, it was reshaping you personally. And now in the second house, you're taking that information and you're understanding how to put that into practice in terms of how you need to restructure support or perhaps specifically money and finances and particularly issues around your family and how that might be affecting you. Remember that it's not at all about something happening to you. It's about how you are and how you're standing up for yourself in the context of the second house. And also keep in mind that Saturn is very supportive for Aquarius. In many ways, it represents you as it's moving through the chart. And so keep that in mind, because that's the thing that will build your strength and courage as you find Saturn moving from house to house in your chart. 
So Aquarius, make the best use of Saturn while it's here in Pisces and allow yourself to restructure your sense of values, perhaps coming from a more spiritual place, coming from perhaps a, a perspective that is much more beyond the rational. This is, in fact, what makes Aquarius quite special is the fact that your house of values, your sense of what is important to you is ruled by Jupiter. It's a Piscean sense of values, and that makes you a little bit otherworldly. That's one of the reasons that Aquarius is the way it is. And so when Saturn is here, it's kind of clarifying what does that mean to you? How does that look in your life? How's that showing up in your life? And maybe you can start to find that there's a way of actually spiritualizing your everyday life. And whatever you are able to transform in this regard over the next three years is setting you up for the seven years and the 14 years to come where you're going to start to see that much more out in the world. So best wishes for this Saturn in Pisces transit, Aquarius. Capricorn. Saturn is moving through your third house when it's in Pisces. And just keep in mind that Saturn is very supportive for Capricorn, Ascendant, Sun, or Moon. It's your planet. And as a result, you'll find that as it's going through the third house, now you can really build up your willpower. This is about finding yourself through courage, through relationships in your everyday environment, through the people around you, the way that you speak, it might be about restructuring things in regard to how you organize your work in terms of whether you work online or whether you're now having to study and build up some skills. Saturn is going to give you the determination to do that. It's going to allow you to put the hard work in. And of course, Capricorn, you're not shy from hard work. You don't worry about having to put the effort in. It's kind of in your nature. With Saturn in Pisces, it's much more about trying to understand the flavor of that through not feeling guilty for not doing the work, for example, if you especially if you have this natally and and not overdoing it because that you you feel like you're the only one who can do that. It's really worth taking a look at that idea that you might be the only person that can take charge of these things that are going on or that you have to put so much time into developing skills or into developing a new way of working in terms of your business, for example. And as a result of that, it, it's not going to really help you in, in the way that it could. If Saturn is there to restructure it, it's not because you have to do this. So when Saturn is showing you how to do this, you mustn't take this on as something that is lacking in you. It's just now about how to master that, how to take on that, uh, that, that new way of framing things in this regard. This, for example, would be an excellent time to write a book. You'll have the capacity to sit down and discipline yourself to communicate what you want to communicate and put it down on paper, or that might be um, establishing something in another form of communication through a website, for example, or another platform or a YouTube channel or something like that. And Saturn moving through there is going to make that work pay off because you're putting all of that investment into your skills building. And Saturn will show you where you need to develop new skills. And maybe you're showing the, the lack of here and there of knowledge that is practical knowledge. Maybe you'll need to learn how to build a website, or maybe you'll need to learn how to speak a language, for example. And all of that is going to be supported by Saturn in Pisces. So remember, Capricorn, that Saturn had gone through Aquarius in your second house and then in your own sign in the first house over the last five or six years. And so you've had this capacity now to rebuild yourself, reestablish your sense of self, your sense of self-worth, your relationship to money as well. And now you're bringing that into this third house of your community. And the thing that you want to accomplish is where you find your drive. And Saturn's going to give you lots of courage here. And so don't be worried about that. And don't shy away from sampling new ideas, new, new ways of doing things. If you're looking for inspiration, look towards Virgo in the ninth house and understand that there's something there that can draw you forward in that third house practical way. You're going to be inspired by the ninth house and understanding what it is that you want to do. What's the purpose behind this new thing that you're learning or this new thing that you might be even teaching? And, and that can also be just for fun, of course. But with Saturn in Pisces, it's much more likely that it's going to be for business or for some practical purpose because Saturn in the house of 
hobbies or enjoyment is not really about having frivolous fun. It's about learning with a purpose. Um, but find that purpose in the house opposite. So we want to have a look in the ninth house in where Virgo is and see what's going on there at any given time for inspiration. The other place you'll find inspiration is where Jupiter is over this next three years. So Jupiter is going to be in the fourth house of Aries, the fifth house, the sixth house, and the seventh house. And all of the significations of those houses are going to be feeding back into this third house where you're finding Saturn over the next three years. Make sure you keep tracking the movement of Jupiter as it's going through these houses. And of course, I'll be explaining that as we go over these next three three years, how that's hearkening back to this Saturn in Pisces. And so especially in the beginning, it's going to be very much tied to home. And so maybe you're restructuring things around home, but in a way that is restructuring your day-to-day -day environment. If there is something wrong or challenging in the life of a sibling, this will also show up for you. Um, it can be something that you need to attend to or simply something that is challenging a sibling. And it's not necessarily something you need to do about any of that. It's just that you're somehow aware of that. Um, and so this can be another si signification of Saturn going through that third house. It may be that you do need to put more time in or somehow support a sibling going through a difficult time. And that can also extend to cousins and neighbors as well, the people around you. Nonetheless, that's kind of what you're here for, Capricorn. It's part of, of your role, the dharma that you have to assume that Saturnian authority and um, take some kind of authority. And so this um, actually works very harmoniously here in the third house. Capricorn, keep in mind also that the third house is about the mind in general. And so you want to take care to understand what your mental frame is, the, the sort of frame of mind and the your mental attitude towards life. Do take care to um, create that in a way that is harmonious with what you want, with what your, your most, your highest aspirations are, making sure that you're not falling into pessimism or despair or or blaming other people, uh, which is a potential pitfall with Saturn in Pisces in the third house. So keep that in mind, because here you're reframing your mental frame of reference for life. And that's going to really affect how you achieve your goals and the, the things that you want to achieve years down the line. So Capricorn, best wishes for the next three years with Saturn in Pisces. Sagittarius, Pisces is found in your fourth house of home. And with Saturn there, this can be another quite challenging placement. It is what we consider an angular house and therefore very, very important. It's one of the pillars of your life. The first, fourth, seventh, and tenth are very important for the structure of your life. And when Saturn moves through there, it can challenge the structure of your life. And that can also be a welcome challenge. It could be that you're ready to move, for example, and now is the time. Saturn can show you also where there's something that needs to be changed around home. And that can show up as renovation work that's needing to be done, or perhaps children expanding into the house or leaving the house, depending. Um, this could also be something to do with your inner experience of life. And very often it is about that. And there's some need now to recognize your the way that you are emotionally, psychologically relating to your life that stems from childhood, because the fourth house also represents our family uh, roots, as it were, the, the family of origin and how we may have experienced that. It's um, the mother as well. And so there can be some kind of relationship to that that is causing you to reflect in a new way. Saturn is requiring you to examine that in a more serious way. It's a really good time for therapy, for example, a really good time to take care of your own needs emotionally and psychologically, and you'll get a lot out of that. And, and also you'll get very good help uh, going through that when Saturn is in the fourth house. And um, it will, of course, affect work as well, because it's in opposition to your house of work, uh, your vocation in life or your social status. And so the way that you're feeling about things and how you restructure, reframe yourself is also going to affect how you work in the world. That can come with some changes in terms of how you'd like to work. It may be that you decide you want to leave the home and move out into the world of work or vice versa. Maybe you decide now I want to retire and I want to move into my home either to work or to stop working and now focus on home. Either way, it's going to take you out of your comfort zone because of the 
outer nature of the results of these angular houses where it does tend to show up in very important aspects of your life. This can also affect your relationships and it can be about restructuring those relationships, but that will, the success of that or the difficulty of that is directly linked to how you feel about yourself. It's directly linked to your own sense of comfort, your security, your emotional security and psychological security. And so do keep that in mind. It's not about the other. It's not about the thing that's happening. It's about your response to that. So we can't give up our authority wherever Saturn is. We have to take the responsibility. We have to recognize that there's some work to be done. And this work in your case is on the home front or in the psychological sense of home. Keep in mind that it's very important for you to make sure that this work is done to the best of your abilities with the most conscious awareness of what you would like to achieve in the world, because whatever you're investing in here is setting the foundation for your life. And that foundation is going to be reflected in seven or 14 years. It's something that you're going to see the results of in the world that can be something with regards to your social status or career, for example. So the more that you put into this change, whatever restructuring might be necessary, the effort that you need to put in to make this work for you, the better the results will be later on. The more inner work that we do around this time when Saturn is at the very bottom of the chart, the nadir of the chart, the more we will be able to um, go out into the world and present ourselves as a coherent uh, being in, in, in the other houses of our chart. And so keep in mind, of course, your ruler is Jupiter. It's also the ruler of Pisces. And so we want to track Jupiter. And anyway, you want to track Jupiter, Sagittarius, because wherever Jupiter goes is where you're going as, as a matter of speaking. And so here we find Jupiter is going to be in Aries. It's going to be in Taurus and Gemini and Cancer, all this period of time that Saturn is in Pisces. So keep observing what's going on with Jupiter and how is that feeding back into what you're doing in the fourth house is showing you where you're expanding into, showing you where new things are coming into your life and how you want to reshape yourself emotionally, psychologically, and even structurally around these changes that Jupiter is bringing into your life. Also keep in mind that the second and third houses are ruled by Saturn in your chart. And so this can have implications around money or your sense of self, your self-worth, um, your stuff, and um, and the third house, which is about skills and communication and the surroundings, your immediate environment. And so you've gone through this process, so five or six years now, with Saturn moving through those signs, putting a lot of order in that part of your life, hopefully. And um, now in the fourth house, it's showing you the results of that. With Saturn in the third house, it can be work around your mental attitude in life, and so now with Saturn in the fourth, this is very much uh, where you're going to see the results of that and how you can internalize that, how you can absorb that and take it on as the next three years are going to transform you in this regard. So best wishes, Sagittarius, while Saturn is in your fourth house in Pisces. Scorpio, this is affecting your fifth house of creative expression. When Saturn goes through the fifth house, it can feel a little bit restrictive. It can feel like you're, you're not able to create and flow in the way that you normally do. Uh, you might find yourself also limited in terms of um, issues around your children, that the children might require more of your time. They might require much more of your input uh, when Saturn is going through the fifth house, if you have children. If you don't have children, it can also be that you've got this baby, this project that you're working on that could be a business enterprise, for example, or it could be something uh, to do with uh, with some kind of entrepreneurship and something that you're you're needing to um, develop as if it were a baby. And, and so notice that that is um, something that's going to take time. It's going to take investment. Um, it's very often that people can become pregnant with Saturn in the fifth house. It's not going to necessarily deny children. It's the more significant of the, the work that is there that requires um, input, your, your time and effort. Uh, pregnancy lasts for nine or 10 months. And so that's not, you can't just kind of instantly have a baby. And Saturn is showing that, that there's this kind of process of becoming a parent. It's not something that happens overnight. 
And so don't think that Saturn is denying these things, although depending on your natal chart, it might. It might be that um, having a child is going to be challenging right now. Getting pregnant is not going to be successful. But nonetheless, it's not denied. It's something that might be delayed. Um, when Saturn is going through the fifth house as well, it could be that there is a challenge in terms of your sense of good luck. It's like, ah, why is nothing really working for me? And don't despair because really what it is is that what Saturn is trying to reshape is your sense of what you think you want in this world. It's not a great time for gambling. It's not a great time for fantastical thinking because Saturn is going to show you what you need. And when you want things to work out, whether that be a love affair or, you know, a creative project or something that can be coming purely from an egoic desire. It's like, I want this to be happy. I want that thing to make me happy. And Saturn in the fifth house is saying, you know what, happiness is an inside job. The, the fifth house is about our the results of our of our um, fourth house efforts. And so where the fifth house is showing us the 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 context of our psychological or emotional nature that we've understood from the fourth house where Saturn has just come from. And now in the fifth house is saying, well, you know what, that inside happiness is it's completely independent of conditions on the outside. Um, and so this is a big lesson for Saturn going through the fifth house. It can give you fantastic results in that regard. It can be fantastic for establishing some creative pursuit that is worth the commitment, you know, that you you learn the skill. It's also an educational house that you're learning the skill, the talent, the, the stuff you need to know to be able to excel in your creative arts, in your creative expression. Saturn is simply showing you where the work needs to be done. Um, and so if it is something that feels like a restriction around love, around pregnancy, around children, this is also showing you where you have the capacity to be of assistance, where you can help either your, your others around you, especially your children, or where you can help yourself in reframing what you think you need to be happy, what you think you need to find joy in your life. If you think that a partner is going to make you happy, Saturn is definitely going to deny you the partner. <laughs> if you think that having a baby is going to make you happy and fulfilled, Saturn is probably going to deny it or make that a really hard job. And so just keep checking. Am I, am I feeling the happiness internally? Am I creating that happiness from the inside out? Or am I trying to become happy based on the things that are happening in my life? Um, this is the big trap of the fifth house. And when Saturn is there, we learn that lesson for, for the good of the rest of our lives, because we really recognize that happiness is the way. Happiness is not the thing that we're looking for. And so um, that, that wisdom is very important to understand and assimilate while Saturn is moving through the fifth house. And keep in mind also where Jupiter is. While Saturn is here in the fifth house, Jupiter is going to be in your sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth house, moving from Aries through Taurus, through Gemini, and through Cancer. And so that's the journey that Saturn is going to be metaphorically taking along with Jupiter, as it's showing you bit by bit in the stages of your life, how to make the adjustments that you're making with Saturn in the fifth. So keep tracking Jupiter for the next three years to see what it's doing, and how it's feeding back this understanding, this wisdom, the where the areas to expand into the things that you want to understand about life uh, from the perspective of Jupiter. And that will help you on your journey with Saturn moving through Pisces. Equally, remember that Saturn has already spent the last five or six years going through your third and fourth house. So there's been quite a lot of restructuring around your sense of emotional nature, your psychological nature, your sense of also um, the mental framing for life, you know, how do you look at life? What is your perspective on life? Are you cultivating a healthy perspective on life? The third house can have shown you also some skills that you needed to develop to move through life. And you're now still using those skills, you're going to be able to put them into whatever it is that you're doing here in the in the fifth house. The fourth house, of course, with regard to your home and family is showing you potentially where you needed to restructure that, that can have something to do with children. And again, maybe there was um, an impact of children on your life, either they came into your life, or they've moved out of the house, or there's some impact around where you actually live. And now Saturn is showing you how that needs restructure, restructuring in the fifth house of children. 
So all of these things are linked. There's not some random thing that's happening here in the fifth house. So look back in time over the last five or six years, observe how you've grown and what has changed there to understand what you're bringing into this fifth house with Saturn there. And good luck with this Scorpio while Saturn is in Pisces over the next three years. Libra, Saturn is moving into your sixth house. This is actually quite good. Um, it sounds pretty dramatic because it is the house of illness and health and all of the things that we need to organize, the drudgery of our day. But with Saturn there, it's giving you structure. It's showing you very clearly where the habits are not working for you or where your diet is not working for you, where your day-to-day -day work is not working for you. And it's going to require your attention. It's going to require some effort wherever the, the the impact of Saturn is felt in your life. And it could be all of the above, or it could be one or another of those things. Um, it's just showing that you're getting serious about that now. It can show you the results of work that's not been done on taking care of your health. Um, that will be reflected on the previous five or six years where Saturn was moving through the fourth and fifth houses and where you've understood something, hopefully, about your psychological makeup and about what it is that makes you happy in life and how it is that you stand up for yourself, show up for yourself in terms of what it is that makes you feel secure, what it is that you need, um, and how you might reach out into, into life. And so Saturn in the sixth is now going to show you how that's working for you. You, of course, still always will have a, a chance to make changes in those in that regard. It's just that right now it's going to show up in the area of your health. Uh, or potentially legal issues or work issues there all of the work that's been uh, that is left to be done is going to be done when Saturn is moving through the sixth house it can cause some kind of medical issue and if that's the case you will be able to find a solution to that Saturn is going to show you again how to restructure yourself how to organize that Saturn is very good about that discipline, whatever the discipline is needed. And the sixth house responds very well to discipline. Um, Saturn works really well for Libra as well, whether it's ascendant, sun, or moon. Saturn works with Libra. It, it's that sense of finding balance, finding some context that, um, that is working for you and for everybody. Uh, and so Saturn here for Libra is not so bad in that sense of, you know, being able to accomplish quite a lot when Saturn is there, you'll probably be very busy, you'll probably find that your life is actually um, really structured, that it's better to find a way of structuring yourself to overcome the busyness and having a really solid schedule is going to really support you in that. Um, do take care, though, it's not a good time to launch a lawsuit, for example, it's not a good time to challenge your coworkers or, or take chances on your health, because Saturn will show you that that's probably not going to work out in your favor. So um, if, of course, you have that challenge coming at you, if somebody's uh, suing you, or if you do have any other um, challenges with workmates, Saturn will help restructure that, it's going to give you the confidence to do that. Find where Jupiter is as it's going through this um, uh, phase of Saturn in Pisces. Jupiter is going to show you always where it is that you want to find your expansive nature, find the, the solutions to whatever the issues are coming up. Currently, Jupiter is in your house of relationship in Aries. Then it's going to go into Taurus and then Gemini and then your house of career in Cancer. And so all this work that you're doing with Saturn in the sixth is going to show you that trajectory between the sixth house of day-to-day -day work and the 10th house of how you can assume authority in your career. And Jupiter is going to show you the path as you go. So the next three years do track Jupiter as it's going through your chart um, and notice what it's recalling, notice what it's um, telling you, what wisdom you're, you're acquiring there and you can apply that to your sixth house. So Libra, best wishes while Saturn is in Pisces over these next three years. Virgo, here you've got Saturn in your house of relationships, seventh house from you, and that's all kinds of relationships, business partnerships and intimate partnerships. It's the aspect of where you um, dissolve into another, into some other um, aspect of life. And, you know, bless your little socks, you often give quite a lot in relationship, uh, Virgo, and you tend also 
to pick up strays. You can be so sympathetic. You can find people who are a little bit damaged or a little bit needy. And it's an unconscious seeking of help. You know, can I, how can I contribute? It's that Virgo Pisces axis that is looking for ways to be helpful, but also to be helpful, to be really needed, you need to find somebody who's needy. And this is the advantage of having Saturn move through that seventh house for Virgos. It's going to show you the difference between the needy and the greedy. It's going to show you the difference between those people who genuinely are uh, there for you, the people who really you need in your life, and the ones who really need to either shape up or ship out. And this is an opportunity for you to really grow through relationships. But it might be growth through challenge because, of course, Saturn makes things uncomfortable before we get comfortable with them. Um, so it can show up as challenges within certain relationships, the important ones in your life. It could be your marriage, for example, or it could be a, a business agreement or some contract or some you know, employment contract that you need to renegotiate because you've been too generous, you've been too forgiving. And now Saturn is kind of going, hang on a minute, that doesn't work for me anymore. And so recognize because it's in this angular seventh house, it's going to affect all the pillars of your life. Of course, if a relationship is changing, uh, it's going to require some kind of restructuring within yourself, but it's also potentially going to restructure where you live. And at, at the very least, it's the fourth house of where you, how you feel about that, what makes you feel secure and your emotional nature. And then, of course, that's reflecting out into your house of vocation or career or whatever it is that you do in the world in a slightly challenging way. It's going to be requiring a little bit of change in all of those dom domains. So Saturn going through the seventh is really a, an opportunity for you to readjust your priorities in life in a really big way, recognizing that sometimes you're too self-sacrificing, whether it be in your personal relationships or in your work or in your home life. Um, show up for yourself, show up in relationships, but also require the people in your life to be a bit more Saturnian, taking more responsibility, showing up and respecting you. Saturn is all about respect, oneself, self-respect, as well as respecting the other. And that's where these energies are, are really well used in the seventh house, because it's restructuring that it's people who are perhaps taking advantage of you or not really uh, being a bit opp opportunistic, for example, um, now you have the opportunity to clear them out and find people who are better suited to that. Of course, this is not your nature, uh, Virgo. I'm fully aware of that, but it's just going to be what's necessary for you because otherwise it's going to make your life really messy. It's going to be very uncomfortable. And so you might find that there can be tensions in relationship. Um, there can be also a sense of um, just lacking interest in your partner um, and that can also not, it's not necessarily permanently damaging. It just means that perhaps more of your time needs to be spent in other areas of your life. And therefore, there's a kind of um, a sense of distance between you and a partner. But that can also work out in your favor. And it has to be said that when Saturn moves through the seventh house, any relationship that survives that transit is going to be a long lasting one because it is a high pressure transit. There's no way of getting around that. Saturn going through that seventh house is going to show you what has legs, what is durable, uh, what is long lasting, and it gives you the opportunity to do the work it might require, for example, marriage counseling or some other kind of restructuring, but it's going to show up in terms of results when Saturn moves into the eighth house, um, which is the result of your partnerships. And um, so definitely do the work, whatever work is showing up for you, Saturn's going to show you that. And don't run away from it because it's just going to make your life difficult in all those four pillars that are very important for you. Keep in mind where Jupiter is at this same time. Where Jupiter moves through your chart is going to inform Saturn how to move forward or what to do. Um, it's going to start out in your eighth house in Aries. It's going to move through Taurus in the ninth and then Gemini in the tenth and then Cancer in the eleventh. And that's over the, the three years that Saturn is in Pisces. And so keep tracking Jupiter over this next three years to understand what it is that you're learning from, how to grow, where to find inspiration, and feed that back into that seventh house of your partnerships. Um, this will help you pave the way for a much smoother transition in whatever way you need to transition in this seventh house. Um, also keep in mind where 
where Saturn has come from. So it's come from the fifth house and sixth house. It's been re-establishing your sense of what brings you happiness, your creativity and how that impulse might um, affect you. It's been affecting your relationship with children, for example, if you have any, or with your sense of enterprise or entrepreneurship. And then also in the sixth house, it's kind of uh, showed you where you might have needed to restructure your health or your everyday life. And so as Saturn has gone through that, it's now showing up in the seventh house and you're bringing all of that wisdom, you're all of that awareness with you into this transformation. So um, don't consider that the hard work that you've done up until this time has been wasted. It's actually going to feed into what you're doing now as an evolution. Um, Saturn is relatively neutral for Virgo. And so it will depend on whether you have a day chart or a night chart, how Saturn affects you. And of course, whether this is your Saturn return or if this is just a transit of Saturn through your seventh house, which will really make a big difference. So do check your own chart for more specific details. And while Saturn is in Pisces, Virgo, make the best of it. It's a brilliant chance for you to grow and learn so much about yourself. Leo, as Saturn is moving into your eighth house in Pisces, it's going to show up some of your worst fears. And you know what? You've got the courage to go through this. So don't underestimate yourself. For Leo, Saturn can be challenging. So do keep that in mind. This, this will potentially um, challenge your sense of self. It might challenge your sense of ego, what it is that you think you're all here for, etc. Um, and when Saturn goes through the eighth house, it can also show financial problems. It can be around money that you share with others, and there might be some lack there. That can be, for example, that you were getting money from a partner's income, and now the partner is out of a job, or they've been uh, set back somehow in employment, or perhaps you lost a family member, uh, they've passed away, and now you um, are waiting for an inheritance, but it might be delayed, for example. Um, there's some restriction potentially in some kind of income that you might be getting from another source, like a government source, or from clients. If you work with clients, it can just somehow seem to dry up. And what it's showing you is you need to go to that second house where you are creating your own resources and not rely so much on other people. It's really very much about finding um, in yourself, you've got these alternative resources. Um, Saturn in the eighth is kind of um, testing you to see, are you are you still okay on your own two feet? Um, it will possibly show up as real fear around loss of money or around some kind of sense of lack. Um, use that to pull it up a notch because this is Pisces after all, and draw on your spiritual sense of what is important. What do I value spiritually? Uh, what are what am I here for in the bigger picture? Um, Saturn going through the eighth is also a fantastic opportunity to learn about occult sciences. So anything like what we're doing here with astrology or tarot or any other kind of occult practices will really benefit from your devotion and education, some kind of structured learning as Saturn goes through the eighth. And that can help you really master that so you can become a better astrologer, for example, or really good at reading tarot cards. Um, so don't think of this as negative. It sounds scary because we're talking about Saturn and transformation and everything that makes us scared. But the point is that the most scary thing that can happen is that we die. And to, once you keep your attention focused on the self, that aspect of yourself that never dies, that consciousness, as I mentioned in the opening part of this video, that's where you'll really find your strength. And keep track of Jupiter as well as Jupiter goes through the next four signs of your chart. As Saturn is moving through Pisces in th the next three years, Jupiter is going through your ninth house now in Aries where it's going to show up your your sense of your purpose in life and it's going to expand that sense for you then the 10th and then the 11th and 12th houses are all going to be highlighted by jupiter while saturn is there in the eighth draw your courage and inspiration from that jupiter is going to show you the solutions to whatever seems to be an obstacle or a problem in your life while saturn is in the eighth and of course you can also draw understanding from the second house where you find virgo to find more details around how to restructure yourself financially, if that's the issue, or what needs to change in terms of your values. Maybe you're finding that the people around you 
are no longer sharing your values. And so you need to acquire a, either a renewed sense of values for yourself, or you need to find new people in your life that you can relate to. Potentially the last three years while Saturn was in your house of relationship, you already saw that in Aquarius. And you may have already experienced in the sixth house some sense of having to restructure your everyday life around your health or around the work that you do. And now Saturn in the eighth is giving you an opportunity to refine that and try to understand what it is that needs to change in relationship to your courage. And Leo, you're all about courage, your courage in terms of facing your fears before you step out into the world. Because after the eighth house, we get the ninth, tenth, eleventh houses, which are really the top of your chart it's showing you how you show up in the world around you so the eighth house is preparing you for that it's putting you in a position of having to build your courage having to flex those muscles of bravery and understanding how to face your deepest psychological fears this is a great time to ask for help look for help from therapists or from anybody who can give you advice in terms of how you're um, working through life and don't get discouraged with Saturn in Pisces in the eighth house. Those fears, remember, are all in our mind. It's not real stuff. It's the stuff of the mind. And so never let yourself feel really pulled down by this. Always you look for Jupiter to find the solution. Look for Jupiter to give you the advice, to give you the help. Um, and then you'll start to realize that those fears are easily overcome because it's about belief and faith that Jupiter is trying to show you where to put your belief and faith, how to find that faith, that deep inner faith that will develop your intuition and help you master this sense of fear. And it's not about never being afraid of anything. It's that's that sort of cliched sense of feeling the fear and doing it anyway. So Leo, whether you're a sun, moon or rising sign, work with this deep, deep sense of transformation that Saturn in Pisces is going to bring you over the next three years and really go as deep as you can into yourself to bring the best out of yourself when Saturn moves into your ninth house. Cancer, now you have Saturn moving into your ninth house. This is knowledge and wisdom. It's uh, some people call it the road to God. This is the house of Dharma, your purpose. And Saturn is now showing you after being challenged in the eighth house around fears and psychological challenges and fear of lack, uh, fear of not having enough money or support or encouragement from others. Now you walk into this house where Saturn is going to show you where you can start to master that and share it out, put it out there. Saturn in the ninth can be a great teacher. It's fantastic for law, for showing people universal laws, universal teachings. Um, it's a way of also understanding the truth of your journey in life. What is it that you really want? how do you really want to show up in your life what do you what's your legacy what is it that you'd like to leave behind and saturn will help you to frame that when saturn goes through the ninth when i had this transit myself uh, for example in my first saturn return it really turned my world around because it was my saturn return of course but also because the ninth house is very much about having a sense of higher purpose and I went from working in international institutions, which I had thought was my purpose, to becoming a yoga teacher and a mother and uh, and then working in these more mystical aspects of life. It's a massive shift. It doesn't have to be so massive for you, but just to give you an idea of that level of transformation in the ninth house where you really come close to what is true for you. Um, Saturn in Pisces is showing you this deep inner knowledge because you're cancer rising you have pisces in the ninth house and that is part of who a cancer is having that deep inner spiritual connection to this house of faith in the most faith-based sign so spirituality is certainly not foreign to a cancer type and when saturn moves in there it's really about getting clear about that it's putting order into that how it is that I can restructure that um, sense of wisdom and purpose. This can come through a very practical level as well in terms of higher learning. It might actually be university level learning and then you might decide, I really want to go back and learn that subject. I want to do a university degree of some kind or I want to do a master's or PhD level degree. And now I'm willing to put in the time and effort that that's going to require because Saturn is going to require the effort, no doubt. And you're going to draw on Jupiter as you go forward 
where Jupiter is transiting for these next three years. In your case, it's the 10th, 11th, 12th, and then first house. And so keep tracking Jupiter over these three years to see what is feeding back into Saturn in terms of knowledge of what to expand into now, what to understand about your life now, how to find inspiration. Because when Saturn is in the ninth, it can feel challenging to be inspired. It is the house of inspiration. And Saturn is kind of going, are you sure? Is, it, is this really the thing? Uh, it can call, it can cast quite a lot of doubt. You know, it's a big uh, moment of self-doubt in terms of your your journey in life, your spiritual or or um, higher minded journey through life. It can also show you um, where you might find teachers that will reshape that. It could also equally put you in front of teachers who show you disappointing results that you might um, stumble across a whole bunch of teachers that you realize are just not really showing you what it is that you need to learn. And that again, throws you back on yourself because it's now you realizing, oh yeah, I have to learn this stuff um, that I may not be able to get from a teacher. I may not I may not agree with my teacher, so I have to really think hard. What do I believe? What is it? What do I feel about this? How do I understand this? And that's not coming from your opinion on it. It's coming from that knowing. It's coming from a, a knowledge-based knowing because it's about learning. After all, it is Saturn and Jupiter together uh, merging in the house of knowledge and learning and higher, higher understanding of life, uh, higher knowledge in an academic sense or in a spiritual sense. So it should also be based in some kind of scripture or some kind of tradition. And when Saturn moves through there, you might have to jockey a little bit for position around what it is that you believe, who you believe, and what it is that you want to do with all of that. Remember also the journey that Saturn has made through the eighth and seventh houses is also informing this. That means that you're taking forward into this ninth house journey new relationships that were restructed, uh, restructured over the last five or six years. And also that sense of fearlessness or the, the sense of being able to overcome and understand deeper fears, deeper psychological blocks that Saturn has shown you over the last three years when it was in Aquarius. So you're bringing all of this forward as you go into the ninth house. So this is not something that you're coming empty handed into. There's a lot that has been shaped and molded before Saturn even arrives in this ninth house. And you're going to use all of that wisdom and start to accumulate that over the next three years so that you're then in the 10th house when Saturn moves into Aries three years from now, you're going to be able to share that out, um, to use that in your career, to use that in terms of your role in the world, your status in the world. If you do all of that work structurally, if you work on all of those different levels of change and growth and facing your fears, by the time Saturn reaches the 10th house, you'll be recognized, you'll be acknowledged for having this role to play of, of um, potentially authority figure or somebody at least that people feel they can rely on while they're doing that work. So Cancer, good luck while Saturn is in Pisces over these next three years. For Gemini, Ascendant or Sun or Moon, Saturn is moving into your 10th house. This is a big deal because Saturn is not only in an angular house, it's at the top of your chart. And so the result of the efforts that you've put in over the last seven to 14 years are really going to show up now. And you're going to see the results of whatever achievement you might have in terms of your career success or your social position. Um, when Saturn moved across my 10th house the first time, I actually ended up getting married and then I got pregnant. And then when Saturn shifted into the 11th, I had a baby. And so it's something that can completely change your life. It changes the framework for your life. Uh, so you notice that it's not necessarily what you're paid for. <laughs> it's not necessarily about the way that you earn a living. It's about how you show up in the world. So you go from being unmarried to married, for example, or not a parent to being a parent, for example, um, that requires a certain amount of responsibility and commitment. And all of the work that you've done over the last seven to 14 years is pulling all of these threads together to make that work out for you. And if it doesn't, it, re it requires more adjustment. It's going to require some 
real um, shift in your perception around what uh, the 10th house um, aspects mean for you. Do you want to show up as an authority in your life? Do you actually want to take on a responsibility in your life? Perhaps that's not really for you, or maybe you're not ready for that. And Saturn is going to show you that. It's going to make that much more complicated. Whatever that is for you, you're going to take your inspiration from Jupiter as it's moving through the 11th, 12th, 1st, and 2nd houses of your chart. It's going to move from Aries all the way through Cancer while Saturn is in Pisces. And so Saturn is getting information. It's getting feedback from Jupiter wherever it is in the next three years. Keep tracking that and, and notice where Jupiter is showing up in your chart. And it will help you understand how it is that you want to reform and restructure yourself as Saturn is up there. This will give you a lot of inspiration and it'll give, give you a lot of courage as well because Jupiter is moving forward. It's like paving the way for you. And equally, don't forget what you've learned about yourself in the eighth and ninth house as well. Saturn was moving through there in the last five or six years, showing you a lot about where it is that you want to go, how it is that you want to show up in your life. What are your, your goals in life and the sense of purpose that you have, as well as what might be holding you back, overcoming your fears. The more work you did in the last five or six years, the easier it will be to assume whatever this new role is for you in the 10th house. And if the work hasn't been done, then that role in the 10th house is going to require more effort for you. It doesn't matter. You can still do the effort. It doesn't mean that you can't succeed. It just means that more effort is going to be required while simultaneously trying to take on new responsibilities in your life. So the more work you can put in now, as Saturn is at the top of your chart, then the more you're also going to benefit from that work as Saturn moves through the rest of the house um, system as it's going through your first, fourth, and seventh house, seven, 14, and then 21 years from now. So these are really very important key houses in your chart. And Saturn is showing you how the structure of your life might need changing. It might need a new way of uh, showing up in that uh, aspect of your life. When Saturn is in Pisces in the 10th house as well, it could also be that you've got a boss that is showing you where you need to be different or where you need to stand up for yourself or where you need to just shape up and do better. Um, it could be that you're needing to take on the role of boss, that maybe it's no longer about an outer boss or authority, but it's really where you're recognizing your inner authority and that doesn't mean not listening to other people. That means that you recognize where you already have the capacity to choose for yourself, take decisions and be an authority figure in your own life. If that's your Saturn return, this is part of the thing that you're here to do. So keep that in mind because Saturn in the 10th for a natal position is asking you to show up in the world as an authority. And so it might feel like your career or whatever vocation you've chosen feels like it's not really working out or it's it might be a lot of effort, but it's actually what you're here for. So definitely you're up for that. And Saturn is just now asking you to assume that role. Uh, this would have to obviously come after your first or second Saturn return. The second time around, you become perhaps a real authority in your community. And the first time around, it might be realizing what your genuine ambition is in this life. And then that next cycle of Saturn for the next 30 years is really helping you construct that. So no time is wasted and continue to follow wherever Jupiter is in your chart, Gemini, because it's going to show up very clearly what it is that you need to feed back into this 10th house that shows the result of all of this work that is based on your higher purpose in this life. So Gemini, best wishes while Saturn is moving through Pisces. Taurus ascendant or sun or moon now you've got Saturn moving through your 11th house this is going to be very much about restructuring the surroundings in terms of the thing it is that you find support from in social networks for example or maybe people in your life who may have supported you in the past when Saturn is going through there it can be that you don't feel that support anymore or it needs to be restructured maybe you relied too much on support from other people and now you have to recognize it's time to support yourself be more proactive more showing up more creatively in your own experience of uh, the world around you um, it can also restructure your friend relationships and so you might find that certain friends are just kind of moving on or you would like to move on from certain friendships 
It could be that your friends are moving far away. It's not that the friendship dissolved, but that they're just physically farther away and they're not there in your everyday environment like they used to be. It could also be that you're having a new sense of your goals and your hopes and dreams and recognizing, you know what, there's a lot more work that I thought would be involved. And so to achieve those hopes and wishes and dreams, you're going to have to restructure some aspect of that. Maybe the dream itself or the goal itself needs restructuring, or maybe there's just a lot more work that needs to go into that. And so Saturn, as it's moving through this point of your chart, might have you questioning some of those ambitions in, in terms of your life hopes and dreams. This can have something to do with how you show up in organizations as well. And that might mean that after this passage of Saturn has already gone through your ninth and 10th houses over the last five or six years, you're now showing up not just as an authority in your career, but you're showing up in society as, a, as a th an authority that people can rely on. You show up as a, a kind of a model that people can feel they can lean on. Um, and so it's not necessarily that the organizations are disappearing, but that you're having to assume a lot of responsibility within the network, within the groups that you're working with. This could also show that there's some kind of restriction around money that you might be earning from the thing that you do, especially if you are in business for yourself. Um, this is a money house. And when Saturn goes through the money houses, there can be some limitation on that. Um, so you might find that there's either a restructuring necessary around how you earn money from the thing that you do, or that it might be somehow curtailed. Um, and that, again, doesn't mean that it's not coming. It just means that perhaps there's more work required, that you need to work harder to make the same amount of money and that whatever, you, in, whatever you're putting into that, however you're building yourself up in terms of your work is going to actually pay off uh, for you, Taurus. Don't forget that Jupiter is ruling uh, that 11th house. So um, generally speaking for Taurus, money is usually pretty good. And um, so this can be much more to do with just getting me maybe more um, cognizant of what you, what you need to do around money issues. So don't let that worry you too much. And then that 11th house also is very much about recognition and how you show up in the world. And so again, whatever work that you've done over the last five or six years is showing you whether you're ready to assume the mantle of an authority in some kind of social persona or social ideal. Um, and if it's not the case, look back and look back at what needed to change and didn't quite get up upgraded. Or perhaps you're just too young. Maybe you're showing up but the timing's not right, and it'll be right 30 years from now. Keep that long-run perspective in mind wherever Saturn is, because Saturn is about time. Things don't happen fast when Saturn is involved. So remember that it's about a process. It's not going to happen overnight. Saturn in the 11th can also reflect back on your fifth house of children. Uh, maybe there's some aspect of children uh, that is causing some delay or disruption in terms of your participation in society. And um, I remember when I had my first child, then Saturn moved into the 11th house. And of course, that kind of kills your social life. Um, so it's for a good cause. Remember, it's not always painful. It's not always something that you don't want. Of course, that depends on your natal chart and your own personal aspirations. But there's a limitation. And in my case, I was really ready to be a parent. And so the fact that I had a, a change, a complete overhaul of my social life while it was going through the 11th house, affecting my house of children, that didn't bother me so much um, because I was quite ready for it. And in the end, actually, I started to become a breastfeeding counselor and I started organizing mother baby coffee mornings and things like that. And so that was my Saturn role in the networks and in the groups and associations that were completely different from what I had understood even a year before. So Saturn can bring you what you do want in certain areas of your life, but it will require letting go of what's no longer viable, what's no longer relevant for you. Don't look at this as um, something necessarily negative or restrictive. It's going to require adjustment and change. Um, keep in mind wherever Jupiter is going as Saturn is going through Pisces, because Jupiter is ruling this Saturn. So for the next three years, keep tracking Jupiter. It's currently in your 12th house of Aries. Then it goes through Taurus in your first, Gemini in the second, and then Cancer in the third. So as it's going forward, you start to understand the information that's coming back from Jupiter to Saturn is inspiring you. It's, it's showing you how to show up in your own life. And of course, we'll track that in the future, in future videos. But 
just keep that in mind. Always notice what's going on with Jupiter as Saturn is here in my 11th house. It's giving you really important information. And because Saturn, generally speaking, is quite supportive for Taurus, it can be really beneficial. And of course, that will depend on your chart, whether it's a day chart or a night chart. And it will also depend on other factors in the chart. But nonetheless, don't fear this transit. It can bring you really great things. So Taurus, I wish you all the best for this Saturn in Pisces transit. So Aries, Saturn is moving into your 12th house. When Saturn goes into the 12th house, it's an opportunity to really start to examine all of life, the meaning of life, the big questions of life, and start to feel yourself kind of withdrawing, pulling in a little bit. It may be that you're feeling a bit tired, tired of working, tired of the drudgery of everyday life and you might feel like you really need a break when Saturn goes through the 12th it's a really wonderful time to take a break and of course it doesn't have to be three years that would be lovely if we could all afford to do that but probably for most people it's not possible so think of this as something where you want to build that into your everyday life that you're building in time to rest building in time to retreat Either that could be one day a week, or it could be a weekend a month, or it could be a week every year where you really pull yourself back for reflection on the big questions of life, because this is what the 12th house is all about. Saturn in the 12th does really well, actually. It's the house of loss. It's the house of where things seem to be going wrong on the human level. Remember that it's a human level on the egoic level, not on the spiritual level. So Saturn in the 12th is fantastic for spiritual growth. It's what it's best at. Saturn in Pisces in the 12th house can make you deeply, deeply spiritual. Keep that in mind when people tell you that Aries can't be spiritual. Aries is very spiritual. You've got Pisces ruling the 12th house. You've got the natural houses lined up in your chart. So you just tell them, no way. I've got Jupiter ruling the 12th in Pisces. And that is making me inherently spiritual. It may not be showing up in your everyday life, but it's definitely there as one of the qualities that you're here to experience. And so for Aries, with Saturn there, it can feel a bit like an itch that needs scratching and that you might feel that you need to keep pushing yourself out into the world. But Saturn is saying, wait, hang on, I'm calling you back into this. It could also be that Saturn is showing you where you might be doing harm to yourself. It is also the house of self undoing. It's the thing that shows you where you might be sabotaging yourself through addictions, for example, or a particular framework, frame of reference that's not really supportive, maybe wishful thinking, for example, or some kind of wishy-washy spirituality that's not really showing you results. Saturn is going to clear that up. Saturn is coming in to do the housekeeping and say, do you need to stop this habit? Do you need to stop this belief because it's not really working for you? It's not realistic. It's not really practical. Saturn in Pisces, remember that combination of Saturn and Jupiter is all about giving form to the belief. It's, it's making it real. It's making it show up in your life. And this is a great opportunity to question certain beliefs. Um, and then, of course, look for where Jupiter is moving. It's moving through your house of self as Saturn is moving into the 12th house. And it will also move through your second house in Taurus, the third house in Gemini, and the fourth house in Cancer. And as those three years go by with Saturn in Pisces, Jupiter is going to be referring back to what it is that you need to understand, what it is that you need to grow through, how it is that you need to transform. So keep that in mind. Jupiter is kind of like the beacon, and it's showing you all that you need to know about how to navigate this 12th house passage. Jupiter is here as your teacher in this case. It is, of course, a teacher for you anyway, but especially now with Saturn in Pisces. If you have this natally, this is your Saturn return. It will feel like, a bit like coming home. It feels very familiar and it might be the first time around and therefore it may not be so familiar. It may feel a bit like you're risking everything. And what you're doing with this process of Saturn in the 12th is actually replenishing yourself, recharging yourself to step out into life when Saturn goes into the first house, transformed if it's your second time round, it's a lot more easygoing because you understand what Saturn is trying to do. Saturn is showing you how to structure your beliefs, how to structure what it is that's behind your eyes. The other thing that's behind the eyes, just FYI, is that, of course, it's closed doors, right? It's bedrooms, it's boardrooms, it's all the closed door dealings. So if there is anything nefarious going on, if there is something that you don't want other people to see, sort it out before Saturn gets in there, because Saturn will show you and the rest of the world what's going on behind those closed doors. 
it better be good because Saturn is going to go in there and say, is this full of integrity? Is this honest? Jupiter wants honesty and integrity. Saturn wants things to be full of integrity, decency. And so any nefarious things are going to be exposed. So take this time to clean it up um, and Saturn will show you how. Remember that Saturn also went through your 10th and 11th houses over the last five or six years. And so you've already learned a lot about yourself as an authority and yourself and your role in society and how it is that you show up for the world taking perhaps a, an opportunity over the last three years to re-examine your goals and your, your dreams for this life. And Saturn is now coming into the house of dreams. And so it's uh, helping you to restructure that. Maybe it felt a bit like a loss, like, oh gosh, I can't do that thing anymore. But Saturn having gone through the 11th house and now into the 12th is showing you that maybe there's something bigger, better, different that you need to do. And that's going to be much more in alignment with what it is that you need, uh, rather than what it is that your ego wanted in this lifetime. So think of that as the deeper karmic lesson of why you're here. And you'll really feel that as a support. And of course, remember to look where Jupiter is going through your chart to find this beacon, find that guiding light Saturn in the 12th, if you're not feeling great about your purpose in life or about your sense of self, it can show up as feeling uh, depressed or feeling exhausted or feeling really down on yourself. This is an opportunity to resolve that. Find help. Make sure that you are getting support, whether it's emotional support or psychological support, if that seems to show up for you. Um, that may be physical or or psychological ailments that you're experiencing with Saturn in the sixth house, twelfth house axis. Take care of any of those things, because by the time Saturn moves into the first house, whatever care you've given, whatever restructuring you've done around those issues will help you emerge really powerfully when Saturn moves through Aries in the next three years. So enjoy this period of deep, deep transformation, Aries, and let yourself really stand out as a result of it.